All right, I think we're good to go. All right, well, welcome everybody. Um, first board meeting of the new year. So everybody's uh, recharged for another year of these. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I think today's board meeting is uh, fairly straightforward in the sense that we'll do our regular operational updates by Holly, and then we'll have the marketing committee uh, status update and uh, some changes there. And then um, I don't know who's going to give the CTO search update. Uh, normally that would be Jeff, but I don't know if somebody can uh, fill in for Jeff there. I think he's planning to join us for the executive session to do, to do the CTO update. Uh, all right, so we're moving us to the executive session. Uh, and then uh, in the executive sessions session, we're going to talk a little bit the Paracon location for the future. Um, we have a list of them that we can look at. Uh, there will be um, an update from the Finance Committee where we are presenting financials for approval. They're all in the board packet as well. And then um, I guess we'll talk about the CTO update. Um, and uh, we'll uh, sync up on the retreat, which is happening in uh, less than two weeks. So, as a plan, if there's any other agenda items, please speak up. If not, um, I'll give the floor to Holly. Okay. All right, Holly, it's all yours. Thanks. Um, first off, this is Tiffany. I'm here now. Oh, good. Phew. Uh, first off, I'm just going to apologize that and just say that Lima is the noisiest place I've ever been in my life. Uh, so, apologize for any car noises and whatnot. Um, so, welcome to the new year. Um, I think the, the the biggest thing to to talk about right now is that we're really excited that we have a plan for this year that um, includes some real uh, metrics to look after to help us understand whether we're achieving those goals or not. Um, that's been really energizing for the staff. Um, it's been a great way to sort of to, to focus our thoughts and our direction. Uh, so the board packet obviously looks a lot different the, this time out. Um, so uh, you'll notice that there are a lot of changes in terms of the metrics that are presented, et cetera. Um, and one thing that I want to stress about that is that um, our plan will be to present to you metrics through the previous month uh, going forward. So in the February meeting, you'll get metrics as of January 31st, um, and we'll standardize all the metrics to report on that kind of format. So all the metrics will be through January 31st, and we'll always know what that end cutoff date is. Um, so they'll be a couple weeks old by the time we get to them, but we'll standardize on that. And that, of course, means that for this report, um, there are a lot of things that we are tracking that are brand new, and so we don't have any data for a lot of things um, in this report, the January report, but you'll see them start to roll in into the future. So any, any questions about that before we get down into it? Okay. So, um, so right now, um, I think our overall, uh, our biggest challenge, it, you know, remains <laughs> around Drupal.org and getting ourselves set up to better meet the needs of Drupal.org. And I think we've continued to make progress, but it's always, it's slow because we don't have a ton of staff uh, or, or resources. Um, and, you know, we're really looking to accelerate that in the new year. And so we're hiring as fast as we can to be able to address some of the pain points that are out there. Um, and our strategy for Drupal.org this year is to do two things. One is to um, improve uh, the ability for volunteers to serve themselves um, you know, uh, on, on Drupal.org, so to be able to um, get real dev sites set up and uh, make it easier to, um, you know, commit patches and get feedback from the association along the way. So empowering volunteers is the first big strategy there. Um, and then the second part is, of course, adding more capacity ourselves so that we can create more stable systems and, um, you know, repeatable ways of doing things so that we can um, get more work done more efficiently ourselves as well. Um, 
So to that end, um, we're really excited that Rudy just started on Monday and is already hard at work setting up a new um, VM server. Um, that'll be the backbone of those new sort of standardized um, dev, dev, uh, dev environments for folks. Um, and at the same time, we've been working on creating a public repo of blue cheese, uh, which is the other piece that needs to happen there. So, um, you know, we're looking at, you know, being able to make those sort of very basic first steps to empower volunteers available as quickly as we can. Um, and that's, that's our focus, um, right now on Drupal.org. So, um, that's where a lot of our attention is, um, on the team side, and then of course, building that tech team out is the other place that we've spent a lot of attention um, December leading into um, January as well. So we are currently looking at hiring a CTO still, as you know, um, as well as a Drupal developer um, to, to join the team. Uh, so those hires are in process. We should, I feel really good that we're gonna have a developer offer letter out and signed next week, um, which is gonna be great. All of our candidates have had great Drupal experience um, and lots of Drupal.org experience as well. So we're pretty, um, we're pretty excited about the folks that we've been able to, to chat with. Um, and then um, the next hire up for us will be a customer support person to work in the issue queues and handle some of the more routine issue queue tasks like, I forgot my password, how do I reset it? Um, and uh, uh, the, you know that sort of thing, uh, which should free up some time for Tatiana to be able to focus on uh, issue queues uh, more, you know, more in depth because uh, we have a real responsiveness problem in the issue queues. Uh, so those are going to be the next hires upcoming. Um, after that, we had on board um, an architecture and security person uh, in a single role and then another uh, a QA role. Um, that's another part of the empowering volunteers <laughs> and also for us internally <laughs> that we really need to get, um, get, get situated. So th those would be the next hires um, and we're working on the hiring plan for those. So those are the sort of the biggest focus areas for um, for the organization right now and, and where we're at. Um, any questions about that? Okay. So uh, just to orient you to the new, uh, the new statistics that we'll be reporting on, um, our new KPI section is focused around sort of our three overarching uh, goals, uh, being a well-run organization, being a heart of the Drupal community, um, and growing Drupal adoption. So uh, under well-run org, we'll be focusing on revenue and employee satisfaction scores. Um, and we have some numbers for you there as of the end of December, um, which are great uh, to report. Um, Net income in particular, I just want to stress that those numbers are not audited um, and not final, and we can't say that those are exactly what they will be, um, but uh, it is definitely um, due to both um, really, really strong cons, um, some strong advertising performance, um, some great uh, cost-saving measures uh, around some of the cons, although we understand more coffee in Prague, don't save money with coffee. Um, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and I've learned, lesson learned, <laughs> I know. Um, and, and the fact that, uh, you know, we delayed um, some of the hiring um, this year, uh, you know, we ended up in a great cash position, which we weren't, we weren't expecting going into the year. So that's really great. I'm excited for that. Um, although I will also say that, um, it's nice to turn out a better cash position than you expect, but in the future, what we're really working towards is more stability so that when we put a budget out there, we're managing to that budget um, as opposed to, you know, showing really big wins. Um, that's a, a level of organizational maturity we're striving for. Um, we probably are a couple years away from that as we keep developing new revenue lines, and it's those are tough to predict out of the bat, right? So... Uh, but th those KPIs look great. Um, heart of the community, um, you know, we are measuring their program participation, some website traffic, membership um, numbers. Um, and obviously, it's the first month, so this is a partial month reporting here uh, for the membership numbers, but uh, they are where they should be for this moment in time. Um, and when we get to future months, I will definitely be using that green, orange, red coding again. Uh, we're still working on a public facing dashboard version of this that would live in um, a Google spreadsheet. Um, and that will calculate for us where we need to be at each month and I'll be, be able to better report that going forward. 
Um, but those are all looking strong, and I'm really excited that we continue Holly, to just add. A few questions. So these oh, yeah. Go ahead, Angie. I'm sorry. Um, these, these goals, they're for end of year, is that correct? That's correct. So when we say stuff like $3,000 and it says four ninety four, then we shouldn't keep going, ah, because we have like 11 months to figure that out. That's right. Um, we're still building the calculator that it will say um, 494 is the total goal. Here's the year to date goal. Here's where we are year to date. Okay. Yeah. Cause that would help a lot if, yeah. um, if we had like a, or even a red, yellow, green thing. So we know, oh, okay. We don't need to worry about that or whatever. Like that would be. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. The red, yellow, green will come back. Like I said, we're still working on calculating what it means to be, what, what the numbers should be at each point in time. So, um, this yep. time through, I thought I would just be making it. It would be very arbitrary if I put green on it. So I thought I won't lie to you. <laughs> I'll just leave them blank. Making sense? OK. Um, yeah, and the one thing that I'm really excited about in particular in that, uh, in that realm is that uh, we continue to um, add camps to our fiscal sponsorship um, program, which uh, I really love. And that's, that's one of our favorite things. So that continues to grow. We're really happy about that. So, um, and then growing Drupal adoption, I'm, I'm just really thrilled to start to see more, um, you know, DDoTO statistics out in the mix for us to be talking about over and over again. So these are the, these again are the top level statistics that we'll report on each time. Um, so, uh, number of Drupal sites, Drupal is a percentage of the web, contributors, DDoTO traffic, et cetera. Um, again, a lot of these... Sorry for the truck. A lot of these are blank right now, and we're going to be reporting them as of the month prior. So um, in the February packet, you'll start to see more of these numbers light up. Questions about that? Like a Christmas tree. Like a Christmas tree. That's right. Awesome. Um, good. So, so those are our main KPIs. Not a lot of news there to share yet, because we still don't know where we are in most of those things. <laughs> um, two, two weeks into the new year. Uh, DrupalCons, I think there's not a ton of stuff to report there except to just celebrate that the Austin site is live and registrations are open and they are actually coming in and people are submitting sessions. So that's all going the way that we, you know, want it to go, which is great. Um, and you'll note that um, the top level DrupalCon stats this year for, for the board will include um, some of those key audiences that we want to target, um, measuring um, measuring what percentage of our con attendance comes from those key audiences, um, you know, in addition to the revenue, which we have always reported on, um, as well as a net promoter score. So do people like this product? Um, and my favorite stat in this is going to be the code sprint contributions. Um, I just really, I can't wait to measure what cons give back to the, pro the project in general. So, so I to the cool, Holly. I know. I still need to make my t-shirt. <laughs> Um, so Austin's up and running, which is great. Um, the sponsorship packages are very close to selling out, which is fantastic. Um, and, uh, we're really excited about that. Amsterdam is also definitely, um, moving along. Um, the bit of news to discuss in the Drupal cons is that we are looking into lead generation, um, on the name badges, usually represented as a barcode, uh, that and then folks who are exhibitors can rent scanners um, and scan those barcodes um, and you know retrieve all the data associated with them. Um, and I know we had some conversation in the um, board packet about that in the comments, but I, I just want to articulate that um, this is something that the sponsors have definitely been asking for and uh, you know it comes up every single time um, and it is a way for them to more easily quantify the ROI of the conference. Uh, so they are looking to do something like this. Um, we of course are looking to implement something like this in a way that does not, that, that aligns with community values. So I think key things for me that we've talked about with the team are that um, if we implement something like this, it has to be opt-in, i.e. No barcode shows up on your name badge unless you said specifically put it there. And two, we're really clear about exactly what information um, gets shared um, when, at the time that you opt in. So, so we're working on um, figuring out how to do that. Um, and uh, I think, Morton, you asked, did we do this in Portland? We, we actually have not. Um, we have not done the barcodes yet. I, my understanding is that we did um, the little squares. Yeah. 
QR codes, QR codes QR at codes. some point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I can't, well, I yeah, think that so was Chicago, Chicago maybe. Yeah, so in DrupalCon Chicago we did, and there was actually a board vote about this topic, wherein we said the barcodes are okay, but you have to make sure that, you know, you, we didn't want anyone's home addresses going on there. We didn't want people, like, you know, like we actually, like the vote was very specific. It was like these specific fields and this specific thing. So I could dig that up if you're curious, or we can re-vote on it now and see if we need different things. Um, but then it was in kind of snafu where the bar got printed anyway with everybody's information on it. So please, for the love of God, don't do that. <laughs> so what we had to do was like distribute stickers so people could cover up their name badges, which was cute. We call it a patch, haha. <laughs> but um, it was actually it was kind of like really not cool because the board actually voted to not do that, and then it ended up happening anyway. Um, with the with the sponsors, uh, would we be looking to make a small profit on the scanner? Scanner sponsors would rent. Uh, you know, I haven't actually asked that question. My assumption is that y y yes, but it would be minuscule, right? I don't, I don't. We're not looking at this as a um, as a profit margin or a, a profit center for the con. Sure. Okay. And and where would we we get the scanners from? Uh, probably the exhibition company. That we work with. Okay. okay. So we're still working on that, um, you know, and, and what that would actually look like internally and working out, you know, this is how we actually produce the name badges. So this is how a barcode would have to go on and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, and we will definitely keep the community posted about that. But I think, you know, we definitely. We know we've been around this block before, and we, we have to do it in a way that aligns with community values and also doesn't get messed up so that we have to distribute stickers. Patches. <laughs> Although it makes me smile to say a pun. OK. I think that's it for DrupalCon, all the good DrupalCon news um, on Drupal.org. We have a litany of, you know, below the KPIs, a litany of things that we're going to be tracking. Um, all of that data, we're going to, again, wait to report, start to report on that until we have a full month of numbers to report. Um, but there's a lot there. <laughs> um, I think the, the things to articulate here about um, Drupal.org is, you know, we recognize it's still slow going, but um, we are, we've made, um, I think, really solid progress with the resources that we have on some of the critical post D7 upgrade issues. There's only two left, and we do feel like those will get addressed this week. Um, tech search has already been improved pretty dramatically, which is good. Uh, and once we get the criticals done, that's that should open up our ability to address some of the, the major issues. Um, so that continues to eke forward. Uh, the other key thing is the um, usability or UX regressions on the issue queue. Um, we have a published proposal, um, and, I, and I, we are working on, uh, that's another place where Drum is spending some time this week, is helping push the implementation forward so that we can get that to deployment as soon as possible. I know that's going to help a lot of people out, so we definitely feel how important that is for folks, and I want to get that done. Um, lot, you know, Other than that, a lot of things have been happening uh, for Drupal.org. Um, so we got these. Um, site builder landing page up and running. It's akin to the Drupal 8 landing page. Um, this is a huge uh, sort of content uh, improvement and eventually revenue generator for the association. So we're glad that those are up. Um, and we are working on um, a another um, a more in-depth dashboard for Drupal.org. So for the first time, we have regular snapshots of all of our metrics in one place so we can watch those trends over time. And we think that's going to really help the community and the association make the right decisions for what to do uh, on Drupal.org once we have some actual data to drive and inform some of that decision making. Um, and I think the other thing that's really uh, exciting that we've been working on and should be out soon is the changes tool. Um, this is a good good step towards transparency. Um, so the changes tool eventually will do a lot of things, but in this first iteration, it's going to just show what's scheduled for deployment right now, um, so that you know what we're working on and you know when it'll when it'll come out the door. So um, I'm excited to get that up and at least. At least, you know, when you're 
when you're looking through your issue and you're like, why has there been no movement? You can go look at this changes tool and you can see, oh, they're working on these deployments. I get it. That's what's happening, right? Uh, absent that, I, the metrics that you what's that? Sorry. The metrics that you just mentioned? Yeah. Are we making these uh, public to the community? Yes. Uh, we will definitely be planning on making those public. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. that would be a good idea. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's uh, something that Rudy and Drum are going to be working on over the next uh, couple of months. OK. Um, and I think the, um, I was going to say my last bit. I was going to say something else about Drupal.org, but now I don't remember. So let's forget it. <laughs> so I think those are the key things. Um, and then you know, community things are just getting rolling again on the community side for Global Training Days. Um, we'll be you know doing Community Summit again in Austin, um, and we have a community coordinator who'll be um, coming on board to do that work. Uh, you may recall we had a community and sponsorship coordinator sort of position rolled into one. The sponsors with uh, all these products just need more attention than half a person can give them. So we have a, we split those roles out. Uh, so I think we just got an offer letter signed today. So she'll be starting, um, Lauren will be starting soon um, and helping to um, tackle all of these, these community programs, global training days, the, the community summit, uh, camp kits, all that good stuff. Local prog, uh, rather local, um, um, local gal to uh, uh, Portland. That's right. Yep. Okay. Good. So she's a Portland hire. Good. Um, all right, and then I think the the last big area to tackle is uh, new revenue. As you know, um, we are making a significant investment in 2014, and so uh, creating the revenue to not only um, get through on budget in 2014, but to uh, sustain that um, growth in 2015 is really important, getting those programs in place. So I just want to give a, you know, a huge shout out to, to Megan and her team. They do a tremendous amount of work in a really great way. Um, and they had great results in 2013. Again, this is why we ended up in such a, a great place revenue wise. Um, we exceeded both the con and the non-con revenue goals. Um, you know, largely in part to to their work. Um, and in 2014, we have lots of work to do, uh, but we're already well on our way. So today we just released an RFP for the job board, um, which I think was a really nice piece of work um, there. And I'm excited to see that uh, get going. And we had a plus plus community blog post reply today, which was very exciting. <laughs> Anything that gets a positive reply on a blog post. I'm all for. Um, and oh, Holly. <laughs> I love it. So sad. No, no, it's good. It's great. Is that the bar now? It's like, yeah. oh God, somebody said something nice. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that's a much higher and nicer bar than at least no one yelled at me. <laughs> um, You're breaking my heart, lady. You're breaking my heart. No, it's good stuff. It's all good. I'm really happy about it. Um, so that's out there. We're really excited about that. And, um, and uh, you know, the other thing will be on the hosting partner program, really amplifying that. Um, and so lots of good work is being done around that. So I, I think, you know, we have a lot of a lot of unknown in this area for 2014. Um, but I think we have lots of good plans and, and the stage is being really set for us to, um, to do that well. So there's good solid work going in there. Um, and I think those are the really big highlights for now. Obviously, membership and marketing, lots of good stuff. We're going to track some things there. Um, the big the big win is that um, the D8 landing page is, is doing very well for us, and we continue to sort of tweak how that works and, and what we're going to get out of it. But um, I think those are the really big uh, things to address in the, um, in the update this time. There, there's more, but those are my key highlights. So any questions about um, that? Holly, I've just got a thought on the hosting partner program. I'm just reading that second paragraph there. And that um, going beyond six members on that page uh, dilutes it a little. Um, have you considered have it basically only ever showing six but randomizing what shows there? I don't think that's something that we – I do not think that's something that we have talked about. And I don't know, Megan. Sorry, so loud trucks. I don't think mufflers are required here. Uh, Megan, I just unmuted you. I don't know if you want to say a word or two about that. 
I'm free. I can talk. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we uh, we did some A/B testing in 2013 and found that like anything more than six does do uh, you know starts to dilute the revenue. Yeah. Um, but what the consultant's going to look at is is there any other way we could maximize optimize this page um, to you know obviously increase revenue so things like that but also we're looking at geo targeting right, right. now those six uh, if you look at the traffic it's almost like a 50 50 split of US versus um, like European traffic and so I'm having them um, come back to me with a proposal of, of geo targeting um, because obviously right now the hosts we have are more uh, North American centric yeah so um, so those kinds of thinking are definitely included in this um, consulting work we're having done. But if you have more ideas, please send them my way because I'll have them explore everything. Yeah. Well, geotargeting sounds good. I mean, segmentation of any sort, I guess, is going to help there. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get a simple randomizer. If you've got, you know, 12 of them and you just cycle through them, you know, and it, you're only showing six at a time or something. But that may still dilute it. So whatever. anyway, I'll, I'll shut up now. But just yeah, no, actually, it's a good point. The shared hosting, just the way contracts have been written in, in, in historical kind of partnerships on that page that doesn't randomize but the other two actually are randomized right. so we okay. are playing with that cool yeah thanks thanks Megan what Great. else you guys all right so any other questions no? all right so um, the next item is the marketing committee status. I um, actually don't know who's been running with that process, but um, so I don't know yeah. if somebody wants to present this or if you want me to talk to it. Yeah, no. Um, hey, Megan, is Joe going to be on? I, I just realized he's not on. And you are muted, Megan. But you can unmute yourself. I didn't mute you this time. <laughs> So basically, um, if I remember. Oh, hey, how about that? Uh, yeah. Um, I can um, pull him in. Um. Good deal. Thanks. Uh, but just to give you some, I'll just give some background while, while Joe hop, hops online, if that's okay, Dries. Yeah, sure. Awesome. So we have a marketing committee. <laughs> um, and uh, and Joe does do quite a bit of work with the the marketing committee, um, which is great. And uh, Ben Finkley has been the chair of that for for some time, and he'll be uh, stepping down from the chair role. And so what Joe wanted to do was just give an overview of where the committee is at. And um, we did a public nomination process for that chair. Uh, position. Uh, so we just want to talk about the self-nomination there um, and make a recommendation for a new chair and uh, vote on that. So that is what the discussion should be uh, when we're able to get him online. I should have talked more slowly. We can already, we can talk a little bit already. Um, so um, this, the committee members are in, the, in a, one of the presentations in the folder. Yep. So I don't know if you guys had a chance to uh, to review those. My initial reaction to to this to that slate is that there's a lot of members, and I wonder if we need that many to be, you know, official committee members. Or are we only voting for the chair? I think we're only voting for the chair at this point. Is the the proposal is to only vote for the chair, um, since these folks are already technically on the committee. And let's see. So, so we're, we're choosing somebody out of the existing committee. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Although again, we did open it up for um, folks to self-nominate uh, as well. And here comes Joe. And the the. Do you know uh, where the, we did that? On the association blog. Okay. Yeah, I see Tiffany in here. Yeah, uh, Tiffany. Tiffany did you call us on yep, I've I've been on since the beginning. Oh, great! I was a little, I had some trouble getting a go to started up, but I'm good. T Denise also made it in, just so you know. Yeah, I got that one. But okay. I so only Vesa and Jeff are not here. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. All right. 
<laughs> All right, Joe, you there? I think I unmuted you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yep. Hello? Yeah. All right, Is you're all set. Uh, yeah, so um, Ben uh, Finkley, as we indicated uh, some time ago, has stepped down as chair, and we need to uh, implement a new chair. So uh, the process was we opened the form uh, a couple of weeks back and allowed people to self-nominate. And you'll see on the, the one slide back, if you go one slide back, um, Holly or whoever's driving the slides. Uh, the, the questions that we asked were, uh, you know, can you provide a little bit of information about you? Uh, what is it that motivates you and what would you like to do as chair? And then uh, what is some experience that you can bring to bear uh, for this position? Um, and so uh, Betsy Ensley, uh, who is currently the director of professional services at ThinkShout, uh, is the person that we feel is is most qualified. Um, and I, I think I can also share that she was actually the only person to uh, submit a self-nomination form. Uh, but we do feel that she's, she's highly qualified to uh, lead the committee. Uh, and then on the second slide is the uh, the slate of committee members and this pretty much represents the folks who are on the committee now uh, and who have been active for some time and and we feel are the, the right people to remain and, and drive the committee so let me let me be clear um, we're uh, today we're supposed to vote on a the entire slate and B the chair correct Um, I have a, like, Joe, what would you say, like, if you had to sum up the biggest differences between Betsy and Ben Finkley's leadership styles, like, you know, like, I, I think, um, you know, one of the concerns that's been addressed before about the, about the branding and marketing committee is that they're spread out a little bit too thin and trying to do too many things. It sounds like Betsy wants to focus on a few small things, so that sounds great to me, but could you maybe compare and contrast leadership styles so we can expect, like, how... How will the branding and marketing committee run differently under Betsy's leadership than it did under Ben's? Well, I, th I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Uh, whereas right now it's sort of a kitchen sink approach, um, and you know, initiatives I think tend to uh, you know the the ideas are there, but then the initiatives tend to kind of fizzle out over time due to lack of resources and um, and, I, and frankly because I think things are spread a little bit thin. Uh, Betsy's style is going to be more, all right, let's come together as a group, identify some tangible, um, doable uh, initiatives, and really uh, focus on those things. Let's put some, you know, timelines, project management uh, in place to sort of lay out how we're going to get from point A to point B. And so I, I think that's probably the, the biggest difference that you'd see. Has she at all vocalized um, what the initiatives, what kinds of initiatives that she's interested in pursuing are? When I spoke with her uh, recently, uh, Drupal 8 was certainly top of mind for her, and then um, membership uh, was another um, another thing that she talked about is you know trying to push the membership message at camps in a more systematic way. Mm -hmm. And what were the kinds of, of uh, initiatives that uh, that uh, were trying to be uh, um, achieved um, with Ben sort of uh, running running the show? Uh, there, there was definitely uh, an initiative you know, t toward getting more membership uh, messaging out to the camps. Um, there were some initiatives that were a little more far afield. For instance, there was an initiative to uh, introduce a Drupal credit card, uh, I believe. Um, there was a, uh, an effort to do some research, some market research. Um, there was uh, an initiative to, um, I believe there was, there was the start of uh, talk to evolve the, uh, the actually the, the DrupalCon uh, icon as well, and there were there were some others as well, but those were some of the main ones. Okay.
Any other questions for Joe? Um, I'm curious, uh, not to, to Joe, but I'm curious um, to throw this out to the rest of the board. I, I don't know Betsy. Can, can anybody speak to, to her experiences and, uh, and her personality and, uh, and so forth? Has Jeff joined us yet? Jeff probably couldn't say anything, um, but oh, if he did great. say something, it would be awesome. <laughs> so I have experience with Betsy, and Betsy is amazing, so I have no concerns about this. Okay. Thank you, Tiffany. All right, so we're going to move forward and, um, you know, approve the, um, the chair and the slate. Um, I'll, uh, I'll make yeah, a motion. I guess my only we... concern about the slate is you said it's limited to like the number of people we have on the slide. That's it, right? We can't add more without taking away others. The, and... the charter says five to fifteen, mm -hmm. so we're we're right around fifteen. Uh, there might be space for a couple of more folks, but not much. Looks like we've uh, got space for one more. Yeah. Yeah, and are we? Do we feel? I mean, Joe, you're the only one of all of us, I think, who has um, visibility into that. Do we feel like these folks are the right people to be there? Do we feel like we have anyone there who's, you know, because of time commitments or whatever, holding up a slot that someone else could be taking? Like, yeah, and it, to be perfectly frank, there haven't been a whole lot of meetings. Uh, I came on board in May, uh, mm -hmm. and I think there have been three meetings since then. So it's hard okay. to get a sense of who's sort of a regular attendee. Um, one thing I think we probably should look at doing is define some sort of a process for, um, you know, who who is on the committee, how do they get there, and how long do they stay? Because currently, uh, you know, per the charter, there's nothing like that. Right. So that could actually be part of the motion that we define a uh, that we define a. Uh, um, uh, a period of time in which they sit on the committee, um, pending pending our our, uh, our coming up with a proper a proper uh, policy. Well, I don't want to really. Well, I personally don't really want to couple those two together myself. Um, I think that's probably a separate motion to discuss, like amending the charter or the branding and marketing committee to add term limits or whatever we want to do with that. Um, One thought I had is that once the the new chair is in place and we you know have a set committee in place is that the that could be an agenda item for the committee is actually um, revising the charter and then bringing that to the board for approval and I wasn't I wasn't suggesting amending the charter uh, with that uh, and I just I've been I just recently had an experience on another board where um, there wasn't a defined uh, uh, time period uh, for, for a committee member uh, for committee members on a on a particular committee, and it ended up being pretty messy. Um, and if we just say, "Hey, you know, we're 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 going to review this in in eight months or a year," um, because we don't have anything in our in our uh, um, in our policies at this point, um, it just makes things a whole lot cleaner. There's some people on the slate that work for me, so I, maybe we should do two votes. And uh, I'd like to refrain from the, uh, the committee vote. So we'll ask for a motion on the chair, and then we'll ask for a separate mo motion on the um, additional committee members. Yes, that would be awesome. Great. Um, do we want to define the breakup of the committee members? Let's do that so we can have our two separate votes on the committee members. Oh, sorry, no, one vote on the chair, one vote on the committee members. Dries just said that he'd like to not, he'd like to, he'd like to refrain from voting on certain committee members. Oh, and ask if we no, it up into two. sorry. I was I was proposing we do two votes, one vote for the chair and one vote oh, for the of community members, but I'll refrain from gotcha. the slate on, gotcha. the on the community members. 
Well, I'll, I'll make a, a motion to accept Betsy Inslee as the uh, as the chair for the marketing committee. Yeah, same as. Second it at all. All right. Okay. Accept it. Well, wait, wait, wait. So, <laughs> so basically, do we have a period of time to say if we have objections, we should say something, basically? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, calling a vote. Do we accept Betsy Ensley as a new chair of the Branding and Marketing Committee? And Hell yeah! If you do not want to do that, please speak up. Otherwise, it'll pass by unanimous consent. Okay, great. Second vote is do we accept the slate of branding and marketing committee members as presented? Um, and. I also probably can't vote on this because I work for the same company Dries does, but if someone would like to call that vote and second it, then we can vote on that. I call the vote and I'll second it. Okay. All right. If no one, re you know, nobody rejects, it has been moved and seconded that we accept these numbers. Fun to vote on things. Excellent. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> All right. My only question is the procedure one, I guess, is that we had Dries and I set that out, which means we had one, two, three, four, five, six people vote on that. Is that quorum? Yes. Currently, yes. Right. Okay. Um, I would say I, I would say that I would really like it if we uh, if we did um, have a recommendation on um, solidifying the policy for terms um, as soon as as soon as possible, um, just so we've got that that clarity. Um, like I said earlier, uh, I've I've seen this blow up, and uh, and I'd rather I'd rather the association not uh, not experience the same kind of drama. I kind of like that. what Joe said and kind of leading this to the branding and marketing committee to talk amongst themselves and come up with a proposal for the board. That's yeah. great. Yep. Great. We'll play Delegation. on that. So Joe, why don't I put that on the March agenda? Is that we'll, we'll expect to have a revised proposal from that. That sounds perfect. Okay. Great. Great, and I'll give Betsy the good news. Yay, go Betsy. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, definitely go Betsy. She's really, she's a firecracker. All right, awesome. Should we uh, move to executive session? Is there any other topics that you guys want to discuss in public? No. I think we're good. Then uh, I suggest you adjourn and that we regroup on the other, uh, I guess, bridge. Um, Dries, are you going to give uh, Jeff a quick, uh, a quick SMS? No, I just texted him already. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I don't know Yay. if he'll be able to make it though, but um, we'll see. Yeah. Thanks to the thanks to the several people who joined from the community to listen in and. Uh, if you have any other questions, definitely feel free to shoot me an email. See you guys on the other oh, side. We didn't, didn't finish the agenda, or did I just completely zone out on the stuff at the end of the board packet? We're going into a big executive yeah. session for that. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. Easy peasy. Thanks, Donna. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.